you know, I have my dog, but I can't make anything decent. Oh. Did you buy the serum synthesizer? No. What serum? <laughs> no wonder why you don't make bangers. Serum is essential for making bass sounds. And for the pets, I use Silent One, and for everything else, I use Massive. My mixes are still kinda bad, but I'm saving up money for Waves Mercury Bundle. Once I buy this, I will hit the Bitboard charts in no time. Sorry for my friend, he's a bit retarded. Listen, what you can make without all these tools he was talking about. Welcome to the first tutorial in which I will not use a massive synthesizer. Today I will show you how to make industrial techno only with the tools built in Ableton. This video is inspired by one of the viewers who wrote a comment under one of my earlier tutorials. Do you have problems with creating warped sounds? Do you think you need to buy extra plugins to make good music? If yes, then keep watching. This video will save you lots of money. To create a sound, I will use an analog synthesizer inside of Ableton. It's simple, but with extra effects, we can transform basic sounds into complex ones. This instrument is only in the sweet version of Ableton. You can download the free trial version of this DAW from the Ableton website. At first, let's adjust the amplitude envelope so the sound has a constant volume. I set the sustain to the highest value and turned down the release. Now, I will turn on the first oscillator and select a square wave. Let's play a note to make sure the volume is even. To modulate the sound, I will use the first filter. I routed the first oscillator to it. Filters are the main building blocks of most sounds. When creating an EBM bassline, I used a filter to make a rhythmic sound. In the filter settings, I have chosen a low pass filter. Look at the filter envelope. I picked a linear slope and a quite long attack value, so the sound will have more high frequencies in time. I added resonance to the filter. When the filter opens up, it will also sweep up through frequencies. Let's listen how does it affect the sound. I also changed the filter drive to asymmetrical free to add a subtle saturation. This parameter tells how much the filter envelope affects the cutoff frequency. This one dictates the first LFO influence over the same cutoff frequency. Let's enable the first LFO. I used another square wave as a LFO shape. With the rhetorica checked, I make sure the LFO influences the sound the same way whenever I play it. The speed of the LFO changes through time. That's because I threw automation to it. I will play the sound now. Let's add the second oscillator, which is a copy of the first one. The only difference is the volume and pitch. This square wave is higher by 3 octaves. Now, look at the far right tab. 
I will add the detune. The voices parameter is set to 2, so now we have two identical instances of the sound. With detune, these instances will have a different pitch, causing a fantastic modulation. I can increase this modulation by detuning four voices instead of two. The first part of this video ends here. If you like this tutorial so far, give this video a thumbs up. As a musician, with 10 years of experience, I drop tutorials related to sound design and music mixing every two weeks. If this sounds interesting to you, then subscribe to my channel. It's time for the extra effects. The first one is a MIDI effect called Cold. Look at the automation I drew. At these points, the shift is equal to zero, meaning no change in the sound. But here and there, we have the shift of 12 and 24 semitones. At these moments, the chord will add appropriate notes with lower velocity to the melody I drew. You won't see these notes, but you will hear them. Now, I will add my favorite effect, the frequency shifter. With the frequency knob, I detune the whole sound. This creates an artificial effect different than just changing the pitch. This synthesizer will benefit from a little distortion. With the saturator effect set to soft sine curve, I add a subtle crit. Let's add another type of distortion. The beat crusher will downsample the sound in appropriate moments. I drew automation to turn on and off this effect. In the end, I used a simple reverb. In the input processing section, I cut the high end from the reverb. To make a metallic texture, I reduced the processing quality and set a small size value. With the stereo knob, I dictate how wide the reverb is. I set a medium reverb time. The rest of the parameters, besides dry wet, give minor adjustments, as well as these sections I turned off. To fine-tune the reverb, you can change these parameters to tailor the reverb to your needs. It's time to listen to the finished sound. If you would like to play around with this sound, Change the most important parameters. For example, I can turn off the LFO to make the sound less choppy. Changing the detune in the frequency shifter 
makes the sound even creepier. As I said in the beginning, the external effects do the biggest job at transforming the sound. They are necessary if you want to resample various things. That's everything for today's tutorial. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. Do you want to not miss my future videos? Subscribe to my channel. Now, on the end screen, you see the playlist with more sound design tutorials I made. Be sure to watch them and step up your music production game. Thanks for watching, see you next time.